Let's take a look now at some other styling used in punk guitar with power chords. We're going to be looking at a different type of power chord where we drop our first finger back and perform a <coughs> slide. In addition to hitting the power chord, we use a slide sound. I'm going to be using an A power chord and a D power chord and an E power chord. Let's take a look at them now. Now I've got my first finger at the fifth fret, sixth string, and normally for an A power chord I'd place my third finger on the fifth string at the seventh fret for that type of chord there. But what I'm recommending you do is place your little finger there because this first finger is going to travel back to the fourth fret and when we strike the strings we quickly slide that finger up while pressing to produce a power chord with a slide in it. Like that. Now if we switch to the third finger you'll notice that when you try and stretch back it's quite an awkward stretch and it might cause you a little bit of cramping in your hand or a bit of tension that's a bit unpleasant. So what I recommend you do with this chord shape once again is first finger here and little finger right there. Now, to start off with, we'll move our finger in position to the fourth fret. And for this example, we're doing all downstrokes with the right hand. We'll go. to begin with. So we move our finger back, we do one down stroke and a slide. But it's important to know that while you're sliding, remember you've just done a down stroke, as you slide, move the right hand pick upwards again so you're above the sixth and fifth string. Now I'm playing the slide and I'm moving my right hand pick up above so I'm ready for another down stroke. So one more time, we go slide, hand up, it misses the strings, and then we go in that time. So we have and if you can do that one more time, at that point you can repeat the pattern again bringing us to here. Let's take a look now at where we've got to with the right hand in action with the left hand. We start off with that finger back. Now if you watch closely you'll see that as I do a slide at precisely the same time my right hand pick comes back ready. It's not left down there and then as an afterthought brought up. It has to be at the very same time that the slide takes place. Now, once we get to there, we can go on. I'm going to shorten the length of time after the slide in terms of how many downstrokes I hit. So this is what the whole thing will sound like and then we'll slow it down. So what I'm doing is I do my first and my second, then my after that last downstroke, again my pick automatically comes up to the next bar. I move back for my slide. I do a downstroke. Again my pick comes up with the slide. But I only hit it twice this time, like and I do two of them a row. Ready? And to wind up, I'm going to go back to the original timing and tag that onto the end. In other words, a slide with four down strokes. So we have. Now, before we go on, I want to show you how you do a muting 
stop when you're playing a power chord. With the right hand, I strike the chord, and when I do a mute, I don't really bring the hand up above it, I just mute by dropping my hand, that is the edge of my palm of my hand, and the pick, which I place on top of the fifth string. And that completely shuts that sound down. Now at this point, you may want to practice doing a downstroke, a mute, and then another long downstroke, or a note that lasts a long time. So it's... That particular movement is used a lot when you're doing power chords, when you want to mute them and completely shut them down. Now let's continue on. We had so far... Then we add our down, mute, down, mute. Again. Now, where we got to was With that final stop, we then move our first and little finger across to form our D power chord. And this part is fairly easy. We do three down strokes. We move our finger back, pick that, and then move it back and pick that. No need for any sliding there, just... So we have, just to back up a little ways, we have... Now, what I'm doing is I'm doing down, stop, down, mute. Now, when my mute takes my pick above the sixth string, I just jump across with my power chord with the left hand, and if my pick stopped when it last muted on the sixth string, it leaps across, small little gap to jump across there, and I go down, like that, again. Of course, if you're absolutely confident of being able to do this, you could go and mute the last chord, but put the pick on top of the fifth string. Then you wouldn't have to jump the gap, because you'd already be in place. For that move there. Now, we're going to look at an exercise involving muting, but we're going to add an E power chord with the first finger on the seventh fret and the third finger on the ninth. And we're just going to hit the A right here at the fifth fret, mute, jump the gap, mute, go down to the, the uh, seventh fret, and then back and start again. So it should sound something like this. Once again, when I mute the strings and I jump across, you have to make sure that the right hand pick is above the appropriate string that you're going to be playing next. In other words, if I'm on my sixth and fifth, when I mute the next time, because the first mute, I want to hit the same chord again, so my pick is on top of the sixth string. On the next one, if I can, I'll try and angle it above the fifth string for the appropriate power chord on the fifth and fourth string. So again, we have... Move along, move back, and across. Good luck with those exercises, and I'm sure you'll do quite well.